Hello guys and welcome back to another video. I'm back with another one. It hasn't been a while actually. I just did the power rankings, but today I am going to be switching it up a little bit. I am going to be talking about 10 teams that so far this season have surprised me this season. There are, or have surprised me with their records and how they've been playing. Now there have actually been a lot of teams that have surprised me. Uh, I actually had 18 written down and I sort of narrow, I had to narrow it down to 10 because I'm like, I ain't editing nothing over 10 teams and it was actually pretty difficult. And plus 10's a pretty good clickbait, num clickbait number, you know? So that's why I'm doing 10, but there have been a lot of surprises. So teams like Florida are not on this list because I predicted them to be in first. Minnesota, I think it is, I don't know, we'll see. Anyway, I hope you guys are having a good day. But let's get straight into the video. Starting off with what I feel is the most obvious one on this list. The one that anybody would have predicted I'd have. The Buffalo Sabres. Uh, they have actually gone a 4-1-1 one one record. Uh, I went over every team. I projected what I think their record would be up to this point. And for Buffalo, at this point, if before the season you asked me what record would they have at this point in the season, I would have said 1-4-1. One, one. Right now they have a 4-1-1. They've really surprised me. I love Buffalo. I've loved them for a while. It's nice to see them have success. Uh, first, they started off. Now they beat. Uh, they start off three zero, right? But they just they didn't. They weren't beating teams that you were impressed with. Like they beat Montreal, who started off really slow. They beat. Uh, they barely beat Arizona, who's supposed to be bad. And then they beat Vancouver, which was impressive. Then they won a little bit of a losing streak, not really, lost two games, won in overtime. Then they won again. They beat Tampa, which really surprised me. Like, Buffalo has just been good. They look better. Their coach, Don Granado, is way better than their old coach. I forget his name even. Whatever, forget about him, right? Because Don Granado has been coaching them very well, and I've been very impressed. And the players, like some players, their goaltending especially has been amazing. The Like, in my goaltending prediction video for ranking all the goaltenders in the league for this season i had buffalo i believe 31st and man they have really surprised me craig anderson has played very good to karski very good obviously both very small sample sizes but as for the players go like uh when it comes to olofsson has been very good colin miller has been very good and i've heard apparently he just hasn't been able to put together his skill but hey it's working out this year for him um, Kyle Ocposo looks like he is in his prime again. Obviously, he's never going to live up to the contract they signed, but man, does he look good. And Tage Thompson, I watched a Buffalo, I watched the Buffalo Arizona game because there was not, nothing on in Buffalo Arizona. was actually on. I was like, wow. So I watched it, and Tage Thompson actually looked very good. I really liked him. I just thought he was missing a lot of opportunities that he missed, but a lot of opportunities. He created a lot of opportunities. He just missed them. But hey, two goals, two assists, four points, six games. Not bad. Like, these guys are, like, helping this team have a good start. And obviously, you got a couple of guys injured, like Middlestat. And Darleen has been off to maybe a bit of a slow offensive start. I haven't seen how he's played defensively. But overall, Buffalo, they just really come together. And they've surprised me as a whole with 4-1 and run record. I still don't think they'll make the playoffs, sadly. But imagine they did. That would be so weird if they actually made it and i really hope it happens because chaos is fun next up i have the detroit red wings their current record four two and one projected record another sort of flip number i had them at two four and one uh so far this year though they started off they beat tampa bay or no no they lost tampa bay i remember that game i remember seeing all of them they almost beat tampa bay i should say it's so close then they give up four goals pretty fast uh, they then they beat Vancouver. They beat Columbus. Uh, they lost a couple games to Calgary, Montreal, and recently they beat Chicago. And the impressive one, just like Buffalo beating Tampa Bay at the end, is Detroit's most recent win, which I believe was overtime to Washington, which is very impressive. Detroit has once again surprised me, and they're doing all of this without Jacob Brana as well, who is one of the key pieces to that offensive top six group. But uh, they've really, like, Detroit, Thomas Grice has played great. A lot of things are going well. And the main thing that's gone well is Detroit's new acquisitions. Not really acquisitions. I should say young players. Lucas Raymond, Maurice Sider coming and lighting it up. Lucas Raymond over a point per game right now. How insane is that? Like, I didn't even have him in my Calder top whatever. I did not have Lucas Raymond in there. And then Maurice Sider has played it very well. And Sider I did. I think I have him at fifth. But man, both these guys have come and played very well. Bertuzzi's playing very well. 
too bad they don't get him when he goes to Canada, right? But hey, you know what? Whatever. Uh, Larkin, Larkin is looking like he's having a bounce back year, for sure. And all these things are like coming together in Detroit, just playing well. And they're really like, I expected Detroit to be better this year. I didn't expect them to be as good as they are right now. I thought they'd maybe end about like, I don't know, 30 and 30 or 35 and 30. I don't know. You know what I mean? Just around there. But the way they've played so far, they've played well. And Nedeljkovic, although he's had the, I think that one game's taken down his state percentage a lot because I think he's been solid as well. Not as good as he was in Carolina, but solid. Uh, next up, the first team actually on a bad side of mine, who I think has got done surprised me in a bad way, is the Toronto Maple Leafs. No, Toronto is not. It's not like they're being murdered or anything. They're three, four, and one, which isn't bad. But considering they're supposed to be this dynamic, very good regular season team, as bad as they're in the playoffs, they're very good in the re- regular season. And the fact that with the competition that they've played not being amazing or anything them being three four and one is pretty disappointing and they have a lot of like disappointing players but i projected them at this point to be five one and two so i thought they'd get off to a solid start here um but so far you know they beat montreal in their first game no surprise there lost to ottawa beat ottawa lost to the Rangers in overtime lost to san jose got absolutely murked by pittsburgh lost to carolina and then they finally Broke that long schneid of losses, overtime losses, whatever. They broke their losses streak by barely beating Chicago if it wasn't for Jack Campbell. Actually, you know what? No, Jack Campbell. I don't think it was that, actually. But, no, they barely beat Chicago in overtime. So, finally, they beat them. But, really, there's been a lot of things going wrong with their players. Is that, like, you have Tavares, four points in eight games. You have Mitch Marner, two assists in eight games. I Like, we know his playoff play has been bad. But the it carrying over to regular season, that's not good. I expect him to get out of this hole that he's dug himself in. But man, that's a rough start. And then Austin Matthews also. Five games, one goal, one assist, two points. And I think also Marner, Matthews not producing has to do with Marner not producing. Because Marner gets a ton of assists because Matthews gets a ton of goals. And when Matthews isn't scoring, Tavares isn't getting points. So that sort of combines. I'm pretty sure they took them off the same line last time. But let's hope they can, after that win from Chicago, maybe boost them a bit. um, And we'll see where they go from here. Next up, another team that surprised me in a bad way. One I definitely didn't see coming. I'll just say that Montreal. Montreal Canadiens currently won 6-0. Projected them to be at this point 4-3-0. So I didn't think Montreal would be a playoff team. I thought they'd be competitive and then miss. Let's be honest, they definitely went on a ridiculous Cinderella run. Not expected of them at all. But uh, Montreal, they lost to Toronto, then they lost to Buffalo, then they lost to New York, then they lost to San Jose, then they lost to Carolina. And all of a sudden they're like, hey, we know how to score. And then they killed Detroit, I believe 6-1. And then they forgot again. Sadly, it was a one night thing. They lost to Seattle. But good for Seattle getting their first home win, right? But that's not the point. Montreal doesn't know how to score, except for one night they did know how to score a lot. But they don't know how to score. Munch- everything just feels like it's going wrong for Montreal. Everything that can go wrong has. And Montreal, Petrie's not producing. Gallagher's not producing. Caulfield, Suzuki, Toffoli. Actually, I don't even need to say who's not producing. Because they ha- can't score. Nobody's producing. Nobody's producing. Their leading score on here that I have is Suzuki has seven games. He has two assists. That's not the leading scorer on their team, but of the players who have sucked. Suzuki sucking, and he just signed that massive contract too. Like, things are not looking good for Montreal. Uh, Bergevin's probably happy to leave after this season, go to wherever. Rumors are LA, obviously, but I don't know. Montreal, they've just really... I didn't think they'd be a playoff team, but man, this bad is not good. Uh, next up... A team that has surprised me and a good way, I have the Pittsburgh Penguins. And they haven't surprised me necessarily because of their record. They surprised me because they're doing it without Jeff Carter, without Brian Rust, without Chris Letang or Sidney Crosby or Evgeny Malkin. All these guys, their first line center against Toronto was uh, Rodriguez, Evan 
Rodriguez, I believe is his first name. That was our first line center. He's not a first, he's like a fourth line center maybe on a normal team. Except man, has he been hot this year. Five games, three goals, two assists, five points. A lot of this has come from depth players contributing a lot and doing way more than they normally would. I think it's because they're getting more opportunity and I don't know what it is, but whenever Pittsburgh's missing players, they always seem to just hold tight and just, I don't know how it works. They just do, they keep winning without key players. They always have. Like they beat Toronto, then they lost in overtime to Florida, who's undefeated. So what does that tell you when they barely lose to Florida? Then they beat Chicago, Barely tied Dallas, shootout loss, beat Toronto, and then lost to Tampa. Now, their record 3 1 and 2, you know, they've won 3 out of 6. But the fact that they're doing this, like I said, without any key players is very impressive. Players that have stepped up include Danton Hine and Drew O'Connor out of nowhere. A lot, actually, everybody's out of nowhere, except for maybe Jeff Carter, who's had a very good start. Rodriguez, like I said, John Marino has been very good. And Tristan Jari also absolutely off to a great start after a ton of questions after his playoff performance, which was a very subpar. But overall, Pittsburgh has definitely surprised me with their good start. Next up, another team just like Montreal, uh, except one of the only two teams that haven't gone to win yet. One of them's Arizona, not surprising at all, supposed to suck. But the other one, the Chicago Blackhawks, were supposed to be, in my eyes, I had them just missing the playoffs, but. 0-5-2? Oh, That's absolutely embarrassing. My projected for them at this point is 3-3-1. So not that I thought they were a playoff team, I thought they were competitive. Just This is just like Montreal. Um, they So let's look at what they've done so far. They lost to Colorado, expected. Colorado, a supposed to be a juggernaut of the league, just absolute beast. Overtime lost to New Jersey. New Jersey's gotten better. What are you gonna do? It's overtime. They lost to Pittsburgh. Their key guys maybe should have won that one. Lost the Islanders, lost to Vancouver, lost to Detroit. Overtime lost, they, but it doesn't matter. They just can't win. They don't win at all. And one of the biggest things I've noticed is not only has their defense sucked, but everything just like Montreal actually. Every this is very comparable to Montreal. My everything has gone wrong. Look at Flurry, Flurry, who they got for nothing. When I saw that trade, I was like, wow, very good job. But man, Flurry, eight thirty nine save percentage. That's and I thought Carter Hart, I know it's not only like five games, but when I was talking about Carter Hart and how bad of a season he had, compared to Flurry, that was a Vesna level season because man, Flurry has looked horrible and I saw the highlights to a couple games of theirs and Flurry just looked out of it. And Lankinen's doing okay, so that means that at least like it's just Flurry's been bad. And then you got, uh, who is here? Let's see. I feel like players who have contributed to this are like Debrinket, who hasn't put up a ton of points. He's looking like he's, he, after a bounce back year last year, he looks like he's fallen into the same trap he did a couple years ago. Tyler Johnson, who they thought would have a bounce back year, he really hasn't. Obviously had that nice goal against Detroit, but like, what else? Jonathan Taves, two assists in seven games. Hasn't, after that injury, nothing's really changed. Jones has a lot of points, don't get me wrong, six assists, seven games. But the problem that they had with him was defensively he uh sucks apparently from what i've heard he's been trashed defensively so really nothing they've done has worked out at all no new acquisitions have worked out and chicago just they look like they're gonna maybe even be last for arizona that that won't happen and chicago's gonna have to dig themselves out of this at some point surely i'd be shocked if they don't but man all right next up I have the St. Louis Blues. St. Louis, currently 5-0-0. I thought they'd be, I think I had them in third in the Central in predictions, but man, they've been really good. Uh, my projected for them right now, like I said, like the, I, the teams they've played have been pretty good, at least we're supposed to be. So I had them at 2-2-1. St. Louis, let's look at what they've done. So they beat Colorado, very good. They beat Arizona, expected. Then they beat Vegas, all right, very good. Then they also beat the Kings twice. So all these teams they beat may not be off to the good starts, but a lot, two of those teams, Vegas and Colorado, were supposed to be very good. Uh, notable players, uh, well, Cairo, man, a lot of their players have looked good to start. I don't know, it's like everything's clicking for them. Cairo has been very good. Perron is over a goal per game, and we know Perron's good, but wow. Um, Barabanov, where'd he come from? Where'd he come from? 
Tarasenko, good thing they didn't trade him, I guess, because he's been lighting the lamp. And then, not only that, but, like, Krug, last year you could, like, suspect a little bit, maybe. But, man, he's looked good to start. And their goaltending, I don't know, their goaltending has been fine enough. It's just the offense that's been clicking so well. I don't know what's up. All these games are, like, 7-4. to four. Like, they're absolutely blowouts. And I don't know what they're doing. The Buchnevich trade has looked good. Obviously got suspended for headbutting, so we don't know everything that's up with that. But, like... Man, they look good. I did they look good and I didn't expect them to look this good. Next up, number nine. Team that has surprised me. All the rest of the teams. Holy Alexa just scared me. She was just like, oh I'm not sure about that. Don't look at me like that, okay? I didn't mean to say her name. Where'd you where'd you speak from? Oh there you go. Alright. Looks like she's done talking. But anyway. That was a little weird. San Jose. San Jose is currently 4-2. I projected them at this point. Yes, I thought they would suck this year. I projected them to be 0-5-1 right now. Like the Montreal Canadiens of the league. But San Jose's like, no. I don't care. And I get that San Jose's played some weaker teams. But once again, I thought San, San Jose would be the weakest team. So the fact that they're not and are actually playing good has surprised me. San Jose. They beat Winnipeg, who's pretty good. They beat Montreal, they beat Ottawa, then they beat Toronto, who's out to a slow start. But hey, Toronto's Toronto, so uh, they lost to Boston, expected, and then they lost to Nashville, which Nashville's been good, and you never know with them. But I want to see what San Jose does next game, because I feel like if they lose their next game, then maybe, you know, that four-game win streak was sort of just a bit of a fluke and easy teams. But, like, Reimer has been absolutely amazing for them. Uh, Meyer looks great. Couture. Uh, Dolan, who they picked up off waivers from Vancouver. Vancouver fans must be pretty upset about that one. Because he's an offensive beast right now for San Jose. And Eric Carlson looking like Eric Carlson. Eric Carlson looking like he did a few years ago before he signed that contract in San Jose is a huge deal. Because him looking like that is a huge contribution to San Jose. And is probably a big reason why they're on this four and two start i don't think they could have done it without him but san jose i expected them to be absolutely terrible like i said like a montreal chicago record but they're just not they're like second or first i think they're they're set they're third in the pacific right now behind edmonton and calgary i believe just off the top of my head but they've really surprised me uh i don't know the big question is whether this is sustainable i think we'll get a good view of that on their next game i don't know exactly who they play but I think no matter what, no matter how competitive that game is, if it's a good team, but I think we'll really get a good sense of where they are after the next game. And last on this list, closing it off with my rivals as the Edmonton Oilers, it would have to be the Calgary Flames. Yeah, Calgary, you've surprised me. Hope you're happy. 4-1-1. Uh, I just, I didn't think you guys could do it. I didn't think you'd bounce back. I figured that core needs to be changed because it's not good enough and obviously it's not working so why does brad tree leaving keep it the same way who knows but he did it again because you know what they say if it doesn't work then you try the exact same thing again how's that worked for you toronto exactly but anyway brad he decided to go with the same thing and i thought they'd be right now projected their record to be two three and one so like a m mediocre team that's not going to make the playoffs but they've been four one and one played really well they lost to Edmonton, <laughs> losers, and I'm like, and then they lost to Anaheim in overtime, right? I'm like, geez, man, Calgary, they keep thinking that this same core is going to work, but it's not. And after those first two games, I was like, I don't know what they're doing. But then the last four games, they beat Detroit, and it wasn't close. It was a shutout. Then they beat Washington in overtime, and Washington's a good team. Then they beat the Islanders, who's a good team, and they beat the Devils, and they killed the Devils, too. Or like 5-1, but... And Markstrom, I think, is a big takeaway because Markstrom in a lot of these games has looked fantastic. I think he has like a 934 save percentage as of right now. Um, I don't know what it'll be when you see this, but as of right now, it's a 934. And Lindholm, Mangiapane, both like over a goal per game. Those guys, and Monaghan has not looked great at all. Monaghan has not looked good at all. I don't know if his contract ends this year, but if it does, then man, Calgary fans probably sure are happy because he's played like trash at least offensively, from what I can see from his stats. 
And then um, Mangiapane and Lindholm really picking up that slack, you know, getting all those points. Lindholm, I've always liked him probably the most. Since that year where they played amazing, then dipped off, I think Lindholm might be their most consistent player. Uh, and then Anderson, Rasmus Anderson, probably their best D right now. And Johnny Gujo. Maybe not a goal, but eight assists in six games, you know. It's sort of like Hopkins. I think Hopkins got like nine and six. So Hopkins better than Goudreau? Hmm? Hmm? No. I don't know, but Calgary, way better than I thought. But that's going to be it for this video. Um, thank you for watching if you are. Schedule's been busy. Find a way to fit this in. That's what you got to do on early times when you got to leave early and just do stuff. Got to spend that time doing this. But thank you guys for watching if you have up to this point. Uh, my next video, I like to say it at the end. I'm trying to figure out a schedule. It's kind of tight, but obviously it'll be the power rankings. Actually, you know what? My next video is the power rankings for week two if I get that in. I'm hoping I'm not busy Monday because then I have to delay it a whole week and deal with all that, which kind of sucks, but... You know, we'll see. So thank you guys for watching, as I said, for eight times now. And uh, I hopefully will see you guys in the next one. Okay, bye.